Hello there, it's Sandip, and in this video we're going to go over the Urusoft Gambit, which is a Gambit worth trying. And so in the world of Gambits, the whole problem with them is that many of them are completely losing. And so when you get beyond a certain rating level, your opponent would have worked out the refutation lines, and you're just going to have to play a whole bunch of middle games in lost positions. However, there are a subset of Gambits where the Stockfish evaluation is between plus one and minus one. In which case, you could argue outside of the elite level, outside of classical time controls, what is this going to matter, given the sheer number of inaccuracies and mistakes both sides are making. And so what I love about this gambit is that white is effectively offering black a pawn. However, the stockfish evaluation is minus 0.3. So technically black is better, but effectively it's nothing. It's an equal game. And when you look inside the elite chess database and see the popular lines, you see that black often gets into trouble early on. And so you have a mathematical chance of getting into a comfortable position, if not just a completely winning position early on in your games. So let's get to it and study it. So this gambit is, is found in the bishop's opening. How do we get here? e4, e5, bishop c4. This is the bishop's opening. Completely sound is played at the top level. You can play this. And now white has not played this move. Knight f3 attacking the e5 pawn. So there's no rush for black to play knight c6. However, that is a move, and if you're going to play the bishop's opening, you've got to get prepared for that. Instead, you can see the most popular move in the database is knight f6, a principled move played at the top level, attacking this e4 pawn, which is hanging. And so now we play this move d4, and the popular continuation is e takes d4, and the gambit really begins with this move knight f3, where we are saying to black, you can try and hold on to a pawn advantage by playing knight takes e4. Or you can play knight c6, decline the whole thing and give back the material. Okay, but before we get into all that, uh, it's worth going over some of the sidelines here. So what happens in this position if black just plays this move knight takes e4, uh, which is what some people are doing. After knight takes e4, white is just better. Because after e takes, sorry, d takes e5, uh, the whole problem the engine sees is queen d5. And so it wants you to waste the tempo of playing this move c6 and shutting that down in which case you're falling behind in development. Um, and you can see here in the Leech's database, people play this move, bishop c5, they're completely losing now because of queen d5. There is a mate threat, the knight is hanging. And so you can see here people, they play this move, bishop takes f2, king f1, and now they castle. And okay, you take the knight, you lost castling rights, but white is completely winning. So it's not a great idea to play this move, knight takes e4. Another thing which is quite passive is if they play this move, knight c6 in which case we can just play d5 grab some space if they go to the edge of the board we play bishop d3 and okay they have a knight on the edge of the board if they play the top engine move which i believe is knight e7 we just develop normally knight c3 and so when i saw this i thought okay this carries low risk so in this position after d4 if your opponent starts doing random things okay the position is still comfortable for you the right thing for them to do is to play this move e takes d4 that's the most popular continuation knight f3 and now black has the choice. Does it want to try and hold on to the pawn advantage with knight takes e4? And you can see that that is the second most popular continuation. So after knight takes e4, we have queen takes d4. And now the knight is hanging. And also black will have a concern around the g7 pawn. Uh, they want to develop the bishop. And so there is a line with knight d6, which you can look into. Uh, however, you can see the most popular move in the database is they play this move knight f6. Okay, and here it's not a great idea to play bishop g5. Uh, it's a little bit of an inaccuracy because of queen e7 check. How are you going to deal with this check? Um, it kind of means you have to move this bishop back to e3, in which case you've moved the same same piece twice, and black is a little bit better. If you play bishop e2, this bishop has become passive, black is better. So instead, a more accurate move is knight c3, and now queen e7 is kind of useless because we play bishop e3. We developed all our pieces. We can castle long, we can castle short. It's a comfortable position. So we play knight c3 in this position. And then here there are some main lines which go like c6. So if you look in some of the chessable courses, you'll see this. c6, uh, we have bishop g5, play this move d5, and now we can castle long. And... Um, Black cannot take because there's mate in one. And even if they play this move bishop e7, then we can play rook e1. And still black cannot take because there is mate in one on d8. Uh, the bishop is pinned. This is a quite dynamic uh, position, which is quite dangerous. 
uh, for black. A very interesting one if you want to go and study. It's not the popular choices. So if you look inside the Lee Chess database, the c6 move is not that common. Instead, what you see is people play this move knight c6. They're trying to hit this queen. Makes sense. Uh, and move it to the to the edge of the board or somewhere uh, away from the center. But here, white has the opportunity to play queen h4. Then black plays this move bishop e7, trying to x-ray the white queen and maybe do some discovered attack stuff. But it doesn't work because of bishop g5. And this is when things start to go wrong for black in the database. So you can see here people, they castle. And strictly speaking, Stockfish can hold this entire position together. It's an equal position. However, there's a phrase in chess, castling into it. And here, black is doing exactly that. The black king is now surrounded by active pieces uh, from white. It's daring white to castle long, which is, I believe, the best engine move. Also in this position, black is somewhat paralyzed. I bet you can't play this move page six because... Obviously, the pawn is pinned, the rook is hanging. So they castle into it. Um, and now we castle long. And they play this move d6. And now white is just winning because of bishop d3. And there is a remove the defender tactic here on h7. So as an illustration, if you play this move a6, bishop takes f6. And there's no time to take the piece back on f6 because we have mate on h7. So you have to do something about this. They play this move g6. Okay, makes sense. But this leads to trouble for black because of rook e1 and this bishop is effectively up for grabs and i'll show you let's say you just waste the move then we have rook takes e7 and now you cannot play knight takes e7 because obviously we have bishop takes f6 we're going to play queen h6 we exchange a rook for two pieces we're just completely winning we're probably going to checkmate black so instead they play this move queen takes e7 but now you have to give up the queen because after bishop takes f6 the engine wants you to give up the queen because if you move out the way, we have queen h6 and we're going to mate black here on g7. Uh, you'll say I can stop mate by playing this move queen e6. No, you can't um, because white has this follow up knight g5. Obviously, the idea was if you played queen h6 now, you're going to take the bishop. But white has the follow up knight g5, in which case it's threatening mate here on h7. Uh, so the bishop is irrelevant. So they play h5 and they're still going to get checkmated because of. Queen takes h5, g takes h5, bishop h7, checkmate. A beautiful mate, where it's always nice to mate your opponent, giving up a queen. So this rookie one move is very powerful, and it carries a, a threat of taking this bishop on e7, which leads to a lot of trouble. Uh, so people sense this, they play this move, bishop e6. Uh, but now the game gets very complicated. I believe a top engine move is g4. And this was the whole value of castling long is now you can start using your kingside pawns. And I believe here, knight takes g4, even an exchange sacrifice is possible. Rook takes e6, f takes e6, knight, queen takes g4. Okay, the game goes on. This pawn on e6 is very loose and white is just in a better position. So g6 leads to a lot of trouble um, in this position. And if they're playing h6, you know what the top engine move here is. Bishop takes h6. Now g takes h6, and white is in a winning position. Okay, gave up a bishop for two pawns, but the black king is completely exposed. And so I'll show you some amusing line here. Uh, after queen takes h6, people play this move knight b4. They want to remove the threat. It doesn't work. Uh, because you have the follow-up knight g5, and they played knight takes d3, rook takes d3. They play bishop f5. They hit the rook. They also keep an eye on this h7 square. You play rook g3. They play this move. Bishop g6, they think everything is fine. They're now completely lost because of knight e6. Completely lost. You can't take because queen takes g6, queen takes g7 is checkmate. And if you tried to save your, your queen, is checkmate in one. So a completely lost position for black. So this move, this very innocent looking move of playing d6, trying to develop your light square bishop, leads to a whole world of pain after bishop d3. And obviously in this position, if they want to play h6 now, we're just going to take, and uh, we're going to have similar things going on as talked about above. So this is the kind of problem that you see in the Lee Chess database after knight takes e4. And what I love about this is that even if black tries to give back material and decline this gambit and just play this with knight c6, the database also shows that black gets into a lot of trouble. And so now after knight c6, uh, the key move here is castle. 
And what you can see here in the database, people play this move knight takes e4. And they play this move bishop c5. So let's have a look at that. So after knight takes e4, black is up two pawns, but you're going to get both of them back because of rook e1. The knight is pinned, it's hanging. So they play this move d5. I think that's the top engine move. And here we just give up the bishop, we get a pawn back. However, we're going to get the piece back. After queen takes d5, knight c3, black cannot take, the queen is hanging. So the queen moves out the way, we take the knight, we got our piece back. And now there's this nasty discovered check here. So they play this move, bishop b6, we play knight g5. They castle, try to get into some safety. Of course, they are returning material now. I don't know exactly what the move order is, but we're going to get our material back. And the position is quite rich. It's dynamic. There's attacking chances here uh, for both sides. So knight takes e4. Knight takes e4 after castling. Uh, doesn't lead much uh, for black. Uh, instead, what they could try here is this move bishop c5. And this is a very exciting move here for white because you can go ahead and play this move e5. Uh, and now they'll see, you see in the database, they play this move d5 trying to develop their light square bishop. And obviously, if you take the knight, they'll take the bishop. And that's exactly what you should do. You should play e takes f6. They'll play d takes c4. And now key move here is rook e1 check. And obviously, they cannot go back because of the f6 pawn. So they play this move bishop e6. And now I think the game, the top engine moves are something like f takes g7, rook g8. And okay, um, the game goes on. An interesting position. But there's this interesting try with knight g5. And it's not losing, but it's an interesting try. Because what people in the lead chess database are doing is they're playing this move queen takes f6. as a complete blunder. Because after knight takes e6, f takes e6. Black has lost because of queen h5 check, winning the dark squared bishop on c5. So let's say queen f7, we take the bishop. Okay, white has the extra piece. Black does have two extra pawns, so the game is not trivial, but white is completely winning. So when I saw this gambit, I thought it was really interesting. Because at this stage, if black does some random stuff, then we're just going to get a comfortable position. And even if you follow the lines, then in this position, if they take this pawn on e4, uh, they can get into a, a bad position early on. And even if they play this move knight c6, that can also lead to trouble. And remember, this is only minus 0.3 on the engine. So this might be worth trying in your games. If you have any comments on it, do leave them below. Thank you very much for your time.